available to bards, sorcerers, wizards, artificers, and forge domain clerics. Animate Objects lets you bring objects to life. We'll get into the 16 uses for Animate Objects momentarily, but a few key use clarifications first about this 5th level concentration spell. When you animate an object while technically you command the creatures to help prevent the rest of the table from getting bored, have them do the roles for your tiny or small objects. Keeps them engaged, and while you're still doing the command, they can take on the personality of the item itself. With so many objects, you can speed things up by using the average damage, and if you're using 10 items, you might just want to leverage a dice rolling app to save yourself some headache. You could also use mob rolling methods, more on that in a separate video. Remember, you're dealing with objects, so no liquids or gases unless they are in vials or containers. From the DMG, an object is a discrete inanimate object like a window, door, sword, book, table, chair, or stone. If you're unsure if something is an object, check with your DM. But a general rule of thumb is smaller than a 15 by 15 cube, not well fastened to another object, and not being worn or carried by a creature. All that out of the way, let's get into some of the ways you can use animate objects as a player, or DM in D&D, from basic to chaotic. Most uses fall into four categories, distraction, combat, chores, and puzzle solving. Enough chatter, and on to the uses. Act out your Fantasia fantasies and party hard while brooms and other objects do your chores for you, as long as those chores only take a minute to complete. Distract commoners by rolling gold pieces down the street. Up to you whether the coins do damage once grabbed. From Dr. Elm Tree, fulfill the prophecy of the dread gazebo and animate what was once only a stationary misunderstanding. Open a portcullis or heavy metal doors that block your way. Roll a bunch of boulders into a barrier formation to take cover from the baddies. The inverse, if the baddies are hiding in an area of animatable objects, have the objects turn on them and begin to beat them senseless. Make several scarecrows and deck them out to look like the party. Have them march through guarded areas, drawing folks away from doors and giving you clear entry. Build your own cloud of daggers and chase after all of your enemies, dealing slashing damage as you go. From Iuithriel, gaslight your enemies by moving furniture around quickly while you yourself stay in place. Animate an entire wagon and crash it into foes, barricades, or stop a wedding. Have a sneaky little artificer hiding in the walls that animates any chest the party gets near, so they think it's a mimic, teasing them into destroying the chest and the goods inside. Pretend a house is haunted to scare off bandits or squatters. Launch 10 projectiles into a room to find an invisible enemy using their blind sight. Lay out 10 bombs from your adventuring gear and send them off towards your enemies each with a one minute fuse. The bombs do 3d6 fire damage to anyone within five feet once they explode, so technically as long as they are not attacked themselves, they could probably do the tiny object 1d4 plus eight damage for one minute of concentration and then explode at the end. Staying on the explosive side of things, if you have 10 sticks of dynamite, you could have them do the same thing as the bombs, 3d6 bludgeoning damage instead of fire, but if eight of the sticks form up prior to concentration breaking, they can do up to 10d6 bludgeoning damage, increasing the blast radius to 20 feet. I'll say that again, 10d6 bludgeoning damage in a 20 foot radius from pseudo sentient dynamite. Animate a huge boulder and fly it above your enemy right before you break your concentration or before the minute is up. Not only can the huge rock deal damage prior to the spell ending, it can fly and hover. Meaning if you have an enemy that's entangled or grappled and can't move, you can drop the 15 by 15 boulder on them dealing 1d6 damage for every 10 feet it falls up to 20d6. Fly speed of 30 means the boulder could be lifted to its max height after seven turns, ready to fall 210 feet onto the head of whatever poor soul is under it. Once it falls, the boulder will do 70 bludgeoning damage on average. RIP to that sad little kobold. So there you have it, 16 ways to use animate objects in your games. Let us know your favorite uses of animate objects in the comments below, and until next time, thanks for watching.